Now, Brian, you suggested that if you put a telescope in space, your problems are solved and you get infinitely sharp images. But I mean, I've seen images from the Hubble Space Telescope. They're pretty sharp, but they're not infinitely sharp. So what's going wrong there? Yeah, maybe I was being a little optimistic there. And I think to really understand why the Hubble Space Telescope doesn't produce infinitely sharp uh, images, we need to understand, to first order, why light does why light goes and travels in straight lines. Yes, yeah, so you have to bear in mind that light is a wave. And let's look at some other waves. Uh, here are water waves on Lake Burley Griffin here in Canberra. And they're moving. This is a windy day, and the water's moving from left to right, or the waves are moving from left to right. So it kind of looks like all the water is going this direction, and eventually we should have a whole mountain of water on your side of the lake. And a dry lake bit on this side. Exactly. But of course it doesn't work. The waves are moving, but the water isn't. Let's zoom in on it a bit. And it's almost getting seasick here. Yes, and it, it sure looks like the waves are moving this way, the water moving, but the water isn't. The water is actually just doing going little circles. Up and down, right? At any given point, the water's going up and down, maybe a little bit side to side around. So that's wa water waves. What's that? The waves are moving, but the water isn't. And, and presumably, light, which is a wave, is quite a similar process, where in this case, you have essentially a wave of electromagnetism going up and down. So you have the field going up and down. And it's not so much that it's moving. It's just that that field's moving up and down. Yes, yeah, so the electric field isn't moving. It's just oscillating at each location. <coughs> so if nothing's moving, why do waves have a direction? So let's imagine we had a flat surface of water and we heaped it up in a pile somewhere. Maybe we dumped another bucket of water on the top here and then poured it off. Yep. So we start off with the water higher in the middle. What's going to happen? Well, presumably it's going to move out in all directions. Yes, you get a, ra a wave going out in all directions. So that doesn't sound like a straight line. No, not at all. Exactly the same thing happens with electromagnetic waves. If you have an electric field and you make it oscillate at one point, what will happen is waves will go out in all directions. That's exactly how radio and TV transmitters work. Right. So how do we get a straight line? Well, let's imagine instead of having a single mound of water, we've got a whole bunch of ridges of water. Okay, and we, so a bunch of plane waves, essentially, going yes, out. Yes, and so we just freeze it and release it, and let's set it all going at this time. Yeah. What's going to happen is the water here, say, is high, so it'll spread in all directions from there. The water here is also high, so it's spread in all directions. So what we're going to have is from every location where the water is high, things spreading out in circles. Okay. So, so we have all this superposition of circles. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that superposition, how does that end up giving us movement in a straight line? What you can see is, let's say that every different location has enough time to move to this radius, is they all line up over here. Ah. So from every point over here, we're getting a wave of water at this location. With any other location like here, sure, it's on the wave of location of this circle, but it's halfway between on that one. So for any point that's not on this line, on this line, you're getting lining up of the, of the waves coming out from in circles from every location. But anywhere else, you're getting it plus from some, minus from others, and it all cancels out. You get the peaks and troughs cancelling out to give you nothing. All right, so we end up with these places where everything lines up in phase, and that is effectively where the light is traveling. So that's right. This is why um, light travels in a straight line. It's just the only place where everything lines up. And this is called Huygens principle. Um, the basic the idea is that the waves do not travel in the straight lines. They spread out in circles from every location or spheres in 3D. But it turns out that if you have a plane parallel wave and you have a sphere coming up from every point on that, the only place all those spheres will add up in phase, where all the peaks line up with the peaks and not cancel with the troughs, is going straight ahead. So that's why light travels in a straight line, because it's a wide, the, the width of the beam is much bigger than the wavelength. And so the only place to add up in phase is to go straight forward. Right. And in fact, this is why other things go in straight lines. For example, if I throw a ball at you, it turns out it's actually why the ball, why Newton's first law. Because in quantum mechanics, the atoms in the ball are actually waves. Right. And once again, they only add up in phase if they're going all in a straight line. So it turns out this actually explains Newton's first law of motion, that objects continue in a state of uniform motion in a straight line unless acted upon by an external force. All right, so we now have Huygens' principle, the idea that we can explain how light moving out is really a series of ways added together. And that explains how things are moving in straight lines. And we can now use this to go through and figure out why we're going to end up with a blurry vision with the Hubble Space Telescope.
So Paul, we're going to have uh, a wave being the superposition of a bunch of little circles going out. They all add up in phase. And so as we let time move forward, we're gonna, our wave is going to move out and move forward in this nice straight line. But this is a very ideal, you know, uh, ideal case where things go on forever that way and forever that way. Life isn't like that. Often things are constrained, they're finite. Yes, what happens if the wave, instead of going on forever, has a definite edge? In that case, you're still adding up circles from every high point, but you've not got an infinite number of circles, you've got a few. So you see you're getting a bit more of a complex shape. They still add up in phase over here, but what's going on around the edge? Yeah. Well, you can calculate that, um, and you start getting patterns a bit like this. Okay. So, so what we've got here is uh, plane waves coming in. We've got a, a barrier with a slit to only let waves through in the middle. Yep. And so you've drawn circles starting, in principle, from every point. In this case, it's been approximated to six of them. Right. And so here we can go through and we can see things add up very clearly to that same nice solution. But then here on the edge, we get this complex pattern, which looks different. And so yep. it does end up affecting uh, the shape of the waves that pass through. So here's a simulation, courtesy of Wikipedia, um, showing a fairly big slit with plain parallel waves coming in. And you can see that the light does continue straight on, but some fraction of it's going off in other directions. Right, and so in a perfect world, this part looks things okay, but then around to here, things are getting mucked up. So and that's if you've got quite a big slit. If you make it a narrower slit like this, you're getting a much worse situation. So now we've taken something that's nice and flat and perfect, and we've made it into this big, effectively curved surface. And so if I were looking at what I thought was this, it's going to be modified quite substantially. Yep. So in this case, you're trying to measure how bright things are. You're going to pick up light all the way along here, maybe a bit more in the middle, but it's going to be very spread out. And in fact, this happens in reality. Here you can see uh, a photograph of um, a water. Um, where they've got a barrier here with a little hole, plane waves coming in here, and you can actually just about see circles coming out the other side. So it really does seem to work, at least for water waves. OK, so imagine we have the Hubble Space Telescope, and we have light coming in from almost a long ways away. So the light is coming in in nice little straight lines, and it gets to the Hubble Space Telescope, which is like a slit. So suddenly, we have something funny going on. How does this end up affecting what we see with the Hubble Space Telescope? Well, let's calculate that.